1000 divided by silver. That's what we're going to be taking a look within today's technical analysis, which will be really the inverse chart for silver. If you take any number that's not a zero, you divide that particular number by the price action or the number for anything that you can chart, then you'll get the reverse chart for what you're looking at. Also, this will also explain how many ounces of silver you would need for a thousand U.S. fiat dollars. Therefore, if price action uh, is at ten dollars an ounce, this will be at a hundred. If price action is at twenty dollars an ounce, it would be at fifty, and so on. So we're going to look at the sixty-minute, the five-hour, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, the three-month, and the five-month chart. Let's get started within the hourly time frame. 60 minute each one of these candles represents 60 minutes worth of data so about four days or so with a market that trades pretty much 24 hours pretty close a little over 23 so let's take a look at this now you're below this fibonacci line and you're the lowest level on the last hundred periods is was just hit so it's in a bear market it's already consolidated and showing patterns of uh, lower highs and lower lows. So until it makes a higher high and a higher low, then there's no reason yet to change the trend. Within Fibonacci analysis, and you're looking for either lows to be taken out or highs to be taken out, and then you got to ask yourself, okay, taking these lows, then where's the most likely spot that this line would move to? Where is the most likely spot that this line would move to? And by looking at it, you would expect this one to move down just a little bit to here, and then this line to move within the previous resistance level, which is, of course, right here. The 18 period average of highs, lows, and closes has been resistance in here, resistance here, resistance on the lows, and, and now it's still within that area in here. So any type of higher low in, or lower high in here and maybe break down below this support level and definitely this one would give us reason that uh, the price action would uh, continue to go lower. On the five hour chart, we're now in an uptrend. So the downtrend that we're talking about from here to here, well, it, it looks like it could even continue just a little bit further or at least have a test of this level here. And here's the reason why. Whenever you find, whenever you're supposed to find support where you're supposed to, which is this line in here, and you do not do such a thing, then you would be looking for a lot of times for a quick move towards this level. Or you would be looking for the previous support or the supposed support level or the expected support level to be resistance instead. And two days ago, or two, uh, the second last period, I should say, this candle in here, did have price action start off here, go down towards here, and back close to this resistance level. So it is, it has had a little bit of a bounce. And uh, again, I'd be looking for this thing to be resistance and then make a move down towards here. You also want to take a look at what a failed move would look like. is breaking down below here and then quickly making it back above this line and then staying above the line. When you see that type of situation, you'd be looking to make a retest of the previous high, possibly going further, and most likely doing it fairly fast. Let's now switch this up to the daily time frame. So we've got a move from point A to point B that uh, is still closing in on the most previous high, but not quite there yet. Maybe it's going to have to find support here before it does it. It's very difficult to uh, tell at this stage, but it's been very successful how this uh, levels have worked out because you had perfect resistance within here, the higher low, higher highs. Now the higher low is at an area which was resistance that is now support. You finally break through this resistance field and you hit a level the second Fibonacci level is perfect resistance. It retraces back to this, thus making another higher low. And this setup brings us a huge bullish setup, which is exactly what occurred. 
and the price action got us a lot higher. It's becoming a little bit neutral, still fairly bullish, but any lower high that comes in that would do something like this is definitely a reason to become cautious. On the weekly chart, this is a type of uh, chart that you're looking for as far as reversals are concerned. Anything below this line is bearish. Everything above here is bullish. Everything within this is neutral. So we've pretty much been neutral for several weeks now as this was the breakout. Fibonacci working out amazingly here where you have resistance at this line. It establishes the higher low. Thus, when it comes back in here, it increases the chances that it takes it out, which is exactly what occurred. Up towards this level and now support is at resistance back close to this level and again support in here which shows us a failed breakdown which did create a fast move towards the upside the final period the final week does have a very bearish candle because it's like a hammer candle where you start pretty close to where the previous level closed at it had a decent rally but then again it closed in the, around the area of the last close, That's, which is the case here. This is a bearish setup, and this would be the first support level. Of course, the second one is within here. So now we go from the week to the month, and now we're finally starting to see things uh, not so bullish on the long-term time frame. Not only is it not so bullish, it's actually played out bearish. It's below this line. That's what bearish is all about. It is, however, consolidating to the point where this moving average is starting to turn high, higher, and it's almost a lock that if you have a break above this level, that you would have a test within here. Now, the odds that it stays at this level would probably be quite uh, high that this would be an area of resistance. If it does make this move in here, you would have a, it would both be bullish and bearish to have a pullback to what was resistance along this method in here. So let's go from the monthly chart to the, uh, the, the quarterly chart. But again, if this thing breaks down below here, then you'd have to ask yourself, where is this line going to go and where is this line going to go? Right now, I would expect this line to go down towards in here and maybe this one up maybe around here as an area for where it might be bottoming. So now let's go to the uh, quarter chart or the three month. And within the three month, obviously this pattern of lower highs and lower lows. Of course, this high was actually higher, but it shows that it was more of a failed breakout. And uh, now the last little high is in here. So it's really got to get above this level here to make a higher high. So that's extremely unlikely, where if it does come up towards this uh, significant Fibonacci retracement level, that would make a lower high. Final chart would be the uh, five hour chart. Each one is actually five month chart. We've already seen that one. So this is a five month chart. Each one of these candles representing five months worth of data. Now it's good to know what chart should be doing within this long term time frame. And if you take a look at the money supply or inflation and you use that as the denominator or you take any number and divide it by the price of goods, we would have seen that everything is deflating. Whether it be stocks or any type of uh, products, law services, prices just happen to have to go in a downtrend in this format. So when you take a look at this, then that gives you good reason or more optimism that uh, the price action should either stall roughly around here and then just continuously have a, uh, a nice uh, downtrend or depending on how you look at it, maybe a horrific downtrend depending on what side of the fence that you're on. Because back in the day when we had this horrific downtrend or maybe enjoyable downtrend again, depending on the side of the fence you're on, you find resistance where you're supposed to, you come back down and then break the level where you're supposed to go here, you did. Now you retraced, you're probably going to go back here and you did. 
Now, when you go from here to here, the price action didn't say you were going to go here, but it would be looking for resistance roughly around here. When that level was taken out, now you'd be saying a move up towards this level with an increased chance you take it out. Although, you'd be expecting it to possibly come back here and find support. Well, it didn't go down quite that high, but it did find a higher low, and you'd really be expecting it to take it out at this point in here. Well, it did take it out. As you can see, it did take it at this level, and it established a higher resistance field. And it comes back to, now what you'd be expecting resistance to become support. It had this failed breakdown, right in here. Often time from failed moves creates fast moves in the opposite direction. There is no fast move in the opposite direction in here. So therefore, the failure to create a fast move to the upside after it failed breaking down created a failed or a fast move to the downside to get in here. Now when it comes down here, this is an area where you'd expect it to find an area of support. And it stabilized within it. It really was a combination of both support and resistance. Broke down below here. So I'd be looking for resistance in here. Well, that didn't happen. Instead, it broke free. And then that, that, that failed. Again, failed moves create fast moves in the opposite direction. That was the case. So now as it's been breaking down any type of rally, this would be the next significant support level roughly in here. So if it, all those shorter term time frames like the, uh, the monthly chart in here, if this is showing that it wants to break free from there, then I would be expecting it to go to this line. Again, because the money supply and dividing a number by the money supply, it keeps going lower. To me, there's no reason why this should not continue to go lower as well. Breaking down below the support line, or at least a move down here, you do this with a lower high, which is pretty much almost guaranteed. And then making a move down to this level would increase the chances that it takes it out. Now in a situation where it goes up towards here, I'd be looking at the 61.8% Fibonacci from this low and this high. So if it does something like that, that would be the price target. Now if, then again, if it does something like this, then I'd be really expecting it to take it out to the downside and having a massive move to say the least. Now, as far as where I'd expect these lines to go, I'd almost expect this line to match up with this line in here and this line to go down here on an aggressive level. But normally, when you see a situation of other different types of charts that have been in major downtrends, I would expect the same thing for this to be the case as well. Thank you for tuning in to today's video and have yourself a magnificent week. Take care.